Third time's the charm, welcome back to Black Tide TV. In today's video, I've got some Advanced Warfare throwback footage for you, and we're going to be talking about the DLC weapons in this game and what they could possibly mean for Call of Duty 2017. Sledgehammer is the studio working on the main title for Call of Duty 2017, regardless of if there is a remastered title included with Call of Duty 2017 or not. So Sledgehammer is working on the new game, and what's interesting about this year's title is that we're finally out of that three-year development cycle loop of futuristic games. In the, over the last three years, we've had futuristic games with Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare coming out in just a couple of days. And, uh, well, the great thing about that is those three games, they didn't have enough notice to stop themselves, and they just all wholeheartedly jumped into the futuristic setting, and they didn't really know how the community was going to react, but now they are finally out of that development cycle, and they can get into making some other titles. They can get into making some other uh, intellectual properties. So instead of Advanced Warfare 2, we might get something completely different. We might get a whole new series. We might get a standalone game like Ghosts. Maybe, in, maybe Sledgehammer is working on Ghosts 2, for all we know, but the opportunities, the options are endless now. We have no idea what this Call of Duty could be. It could be futuristic, it could be ultra-dimensional, it could be past, it could be present, it could be anything. They could do, they could go wild with this game. They can make absolutely anything and we would have no idea until, of course, like July when we get our first leak. So, I've, I and a lot of others in the community have been looking for answers. We all want to know what's coming next, and I think that Sledgehammer might have been dropping hints to us the entire lifespan of Advanced Warfare. They've been adding these DLC weapons that kind of have too much in common with themselves and not a lot in common with the actual game. What I mean by that is Advanced Warfare is a futuristic game. I think it's set in like 2050 or 2065 or something like that. I can't really remember that well, but it is set in the future, for sure. There are laser guns and all kinds of wacky things happening, but all of the DLC weapons, with a couple outliers, of course, AE4, Ohm, Repulsor, M1 Irons doesn't really fit in there anywhere, and the Blunderbuss, with the exception of those couple weapons, most of the other DLC weapons kind of all fit into one category. They all saw service in the real world around the same time period and in the same wars and obviously you get where i'm going with this we may be going back to a past call of duty a boots on the ground literal like real world war kind of call of duty again it's been so long since we've actually had one of those a non-fictional story it would be really cool if we went back to that and i honestly think that some of these weapons are really really lending themselves to that theory i'm actually going to go down a list of the weapons that we have had as dlc weapons in advanced warfare i did a little bit of research on these weapons on their real world counterparts and uh, when they saw service and you're going to be amazed okay just stay with me here stg 44 saw its first service in World War II. It was in it was in service from 1943 to 1962. The AK-47 saw its first service in the Vietnam War 1949 to present. The M16 saw its first service in the Vietnam War 1964 to present. The M1 Garand saw its first service in World War II. God, I hate that gun, but it saw its first service in World War II, and it was in service from 1936 to actually present in some countries. The lever action, there's not really a great time period to actually put that one in just because it's so broad. There are so many different kinds of lever actions. All the other ones are specific models, whereas, whereas uh, the lever action is not. So I just went back to the first significant lever action, which saw its service in the American Civil War in the 1860s, so 1860 to present. Uh, the MP40 saw its first service in World War II, 1938 to 1945. The Sten saw its first service in World War II, 1941 to the 1960s. The SVO is actually the Dragunov sniper rifle in real life, and it saw its first service in the Vietnam War, 1963 to present. And the 1911, you guessed it, saw its first service around the year 1911 in World War I, and it's actually still used to this day. Now, the interesting thing about all these weapons, not all of them kind of fit into the World War II setting but every single one of these weapons saw service during the Vietnam War 
with maybe the exception of the lever action. I mean, it, it really depends on what model of lever action they were using, but all of these weapons saw service during the Vietnam War, which happened between 1955 and 1975. So I think that's extremely, extremely interesting that they put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weapons into this game that are all from the same era of history. Instead of making crazy futuristic laser weapons for their DLC and for their supply drops, they added weapons from the same era. All, all weapons coming out of the Vietnam War, all weapons coming out of World War II, that kind of... Uh, time and history and they added all nine of these weapons to the game they only added like two or three futuristic weapons that seemed very odd to me because these aren't fan favorite weapons like the ak-47 and the m16 maybe a part or uh, maybe are two of the outliers there but these aren't fan favorite weapons like these are weapons that saw their last use in a call of duty game in like world at war or call of duty 3 or something like that these are old old call of duty weapons they're definitely not fan favorites so there's that you can rule that out for why they might have put it in this game or why they might have put them in this game so the only other reason that they could put this in the game is maybe they're testing their system maybe they're testing their development team to see just how well they can handle doing past guns because doing real world guns is completely different than making your own guns because real world guns, they actually have to go and they have to get the audio files and they have to do all their tuning, their fine tuning to make the gun as realistic as possible. Maybe they're testing their system. Maybe they're testing their dev team for, they're getting their dev team ready for the new Call of Duty. Maybe all of these weapons will return in whatever Sledgehammer brings out in Call of Duty 2017. I'm super excited to see all of these weapons, all of these Vietnam War weapons appearing in this game. We haven't actually had a Vietnam War Call of Duty as far as I recall. So it would be really cool to get into a war during that time period. It's actually a very long time period and they could make a series out of it. 1955 to 1975, 20 years is a long is a long time and they could make they could fit a lot of content into that 20 years. They don't have to grind through the entire Vietnam War in one campaign. They could do specific historical conflicts from that war and they could bleed it out and they could make a past Call of Duty go for an, a little bit of a trilogy or something like that. Maybe they're going to make a franchise of it and they're going to have a Vietnam War franchise coming from Sledgehammer. Now that Infinite Warfare is coming into the futuristic franchise, maybe we're going to see a past franchise from Sledgehammer and possibly a new modern game from Treyarch in 2019, 2018. That would be, that would be super interesting. I'm super excited to see what this next Call of Duty game is going to be. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys a little bit later.